Hey guys, Andy here. So this last week or two has had quite a lot of firsts for me in it, mainly driven by the fact that I've had an iPhone as a daily for the first time ever, uh, this being the iPhone SE 2020. So I thought, well, let's have another first and let me do a cross-platform head-to-head -head against my Pixel 4, which is what we're doing today. So, oh, on the left we have my Pixel 4 with a Snapdragon 855 chipset, an octa-core CPU, Adreno 640 and 6GB of RAM. And that is going up against the uh, iPhone SE 2020, which has an Apple A13 Bionic uh, chipset, a hexa-core CPU, Apple GPU, 4-core graphics, whatever that might mean, and 3GB of RAM. So let's start off with the Angry Birds 2 opening test. Nice and simple, obviously both operating systems have Angry Birds 2, so we can compare them head to head. And the iPhone SE 2020 takes the first run uh, reasonably easily. I mean, not massive difference, but reasonably easy. So I'll clear everything out of memory, and let's give it a second run just to check. And it starts off looking a little bit closer. I mean, the iPhone's still ahead, the Pixel not quite as far behind perhaps, but definitely the Angry Birds 2 opening test goes to the iPhone SE. So then we'll move straight on to the Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark test, which I'm going to tell you now, the iPhone is the favourite for, it is the more powerful chipset. And I can't lie, it got to the end quite a lot quicker, I had to cut a good sort of, I don't know, half a minute or so out. And the Pixel 4 came in 800 behind at 2400. So uh, a reasonably clear win in the benchmark for the iPhone SE. Now we're heading outside. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because there are two separate bits of software. So I'm having to kind of improvise to an extent and it's not as clear looking at the iPhone. It just gives an accuracy that comes down and down and down rather than if it actually gets a GPS lock. But I think, I think the Pixel 4 wins. I think that's a more accurate lock in a quicker fashion. Um, I did then realize that I can switch it over to meters on the iPhone. So well, let's, let's kill both apps and let's start them both up again. And they were both a lot quicker in getting better accuracy, but I would say the Pixel 4 does have better accuracy. So we're going to give the GPS test to the Pixel 4. Then we're going to head back indoors and we're going to check the speakers out. I'll we'll start off with some music and then we'll move on to the podcast. Um, much the same from both of them, really, to be fair, but we're going to uh, move over to podcasts. Essentially gave organizations like TCHQ and the NSA a free reign to go do mass surveillance. It also uh, overturned a lot of the rules and laws, and now we're... Like TCHQ and the NSA, a free reign to go do mass surveillance. It also uh, overturned a lot of the rules and laws. And now we're in the situation where we're in the situation where people are clamoring for the Googles and the Facebooks and the Twitters to lock them out and provide for the Googles and the Facebooks and the Twitters to lock them out and provide real. So I'm not sure how it sounds to you from the recording, but the Pixel 4 does sound slightly better. I think the volumes are very similar but the overall sound quality just seems a bit better, a bit more bass in the Pixel 4.
So moving to the screen brightness test, um, I've turned off any kind of adaptive brightness or auto brightness. I've cranked both screens up to full and I've got a totally white screen. And here is my light meter, the Pixel 4. Clocking into the low 600s, we got a 612 at one point there, I think. The iPhone SE, mid to high 500s, I think it was a 570 something. 613 there for a second. 577, I think is the highest. So the Pixel 4 does have the slightly brighter screen and wins the screen brightness test. We move on to the uh, Google Chrome browser test, and maybe I should have used Safari, but I couldn't find how to reset cookies and data on the uh, iPhone. But thankfully I hadn't used it much for browsing in the week that I'd used it. Um, and I could choose a couple of websites that um, almost certainly I didn't browse to on the iPhone. Although I had to think twice when I saw how quickly it loaded the BBC website. I mean, it was basically there, which I think is what it's doing. <laughs> in the background, I think it's loading in. As you type in, it thinks, all right, you're going to NFL.com, where it is then? And it's there instantly. And you've got to give them credit for that, to be fair. That's that's clever usage of, uh, I don't know, is that predictive even? I don't know if it's even predictive. I'm typing in. So the last one, I did the iPhone second, and I gave it less time to understand where I was going, and the Pixel 4 kind of snuck in. But I do think you've got to give the browser test to the iPhone SE 2020. Both scroll lovely, but interestingly, the Pixel 4 seemed to scroll a bit quicker and slicker. I did find that on the iPhone SE. I couldn't spin through things as much um, as in scrolling up and down as I could normally on an Android device. So, as you will see, keeping the score, it was a three-all draw. Now, you could argue from a tiebreaker that the Pixel 4, possibly surprising to some, has the better battery. But you could then argue that the iPhone SE possibly has the better camera. And then I thought, but it's quite a limited camera, as in the zoom, the night mode, and that kind of thing, so I took it back off again. So, oh, you might call me a fanboy, I will just declare the Pixel 4 the winner of this head-to-head -head test. So there you go, guys. Um, don't take it too seriously. Let's not start the Android versus Apple arguments in the comments. I'm not saying the Pixel 4 is the better phone. Really, it's just a bit of fun to give you some more information about these two devices, and then you can make your own decision. Um, so hopefully you found it informative. I'd like to say thank you to those that contribute towards the running of the channel on patreon.com slash AAUK. If you can spare a couple of dollars a month, it would be really appreciated. I do buy all of my own devices, so if you can contribute, that would help in providing these sort of videos. If you don't already, please do make sure you subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on my channel. Uh, but for now, my name's Andy, and I'll catch you all again soon.